Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. My name is Clay Lexon, and I'm an engineer with the City of Moorhead. This presentation is meant to serve as a source of information for a street project that will take place in your neighborhood this upcoming summer. Traditionally, the engineering department would hold in-person public meetings. This year, that's not the case. We will be posting presentations like this for many of our street projects. In this presentation, I will give you a brief explanation of how the city selects its projects, how we decide which streets to do, and what kind of work we're going to be doing. I will also explain the kind of work we are proposing to do in your neighborhood. And since we aren't able to do a live question and answer session, I will be going through several frequently asked questions. The purpose of this presentation is to provide our residents with information about the projects and also provide an opportunity for residents to solicit feedback. You may be wondering how and why your street was chosen for improvements. There are several factors that are taken into consideration. The most significant factor is what we call a pavement condition index, or PCI for short. This allows us to create a value or a grade or a score as a representation of the condition of a certain road. The PCI is a numerical value with zero being the worst and 100 being the best. Zero would mean that there's no pavement left, that the road is in very poor condition and that 100 would essentially mean that it's brand new construction. Every roadway, every street within the city gets one of these values, and we update these values yearly. The city hires a consultant to evaluate the condition of the road, and we take that information, we feed it into our pavement management software, and that helps us determine which projects to do based on our budget for the year. We also take into consideration the age of the street and how it was constructed. For our street projects, we look five years ahead. Right now, if you go to the city's website, you can view, view our five-year CIP plan and see all the street improvement projects we are proposing to do. So we use our pavement management software, the age and history of the road, and our proposed budget for each year, and we develop a five-year plan. It tells us which streets we should do and how to get the most out of our tax dollars. One of the ways we use our money the most efficiently is by performing major maintenance at critical points during the life of the street. Specifically, this happens when we're able to perform what's called a mill and overlay. And I'll explain this type of project and several others on the next slide. Before I go into more depth on the pavement condition index, I'd like to explain the three major types of projects that we typically perform. These are what we refer to as a mill and overlay, a rehab, and a reconstruction. A mill and overlay is the simplest of the three types of projects. During a mill and overlay, we remove the top couple inches of pavement using a milling machine, and then we put down a couple inches of new bituminous or asphalt pavement. During these projects, we are also required by law to update sidewalk and pedestrian wraps at intersections to make them ADA compliant. We will replace certain sections of curb and gutter if it isn't draining or if it's significantly damaged or broken up. We will also make repairs to storm sewer inlets and manholes if needed. Again, it's important to note that a mill and overlay project is the most cost-effective project we have. We get the most life out of our roads for the least amount of money. A mill and overlay will, on average, cost a little over $3 per square foot of roadway. The next type of project is what we call a rehab. This is where we will replace the entire pavement section, but we will leave the curb and gutter largely in place. We will do spot repairs on the curb and gutter and make the ADA updates and storm sewer improvements. This project is more involved than a mill and overlay and on average costs a little more than $7 per square foot of roadway, a little more than double what a mill and overlay costs. A reconstruction is where we will completely replace the pavement and the curb and gutter. This is the most complex type of project we will do and typically costs a little over $10 per square foot of roadway, more than three times what a mill and overlay will cost. Now that I've given a little bit of detail on the types of projects we do, I'm going to explain when we typically like to do these types of projects and how it relates to the PCI. So over time and from use, the PCI of any given street will decrease. From time to time, we will perform maintenance on that street. The type of maintenance depends on several factors, but it's largely influenced by the PCI. The chart on this slide shows how our maintenance strategies change depending on the PCI value. On the top that you can see, that the PCI values are going from 100 to zero, so from best to worst. As you read from top to bottom, you can see our different strategies and how they change as the PCI gets lower. 
For the early years of pavement, we do minor maintenance, such as crack sealing and seal coating, or sometimes it's called a chip seal. When the PCI drops into the 70s, we start to look at more significant maintenance, such as a mill and overlay, in order to bring that PCI back, back up. If the PCI is even lower, we don't think that a mill and overlay will be cost effective. We will look at more extensive projects where we might replace the entire pavement, which is called a rehab, or completely replace the pavement and the curb and gutter, which is called a reconstruction. Generally, the lower the PCI, the worse condition the road is in, and the more extensive and expensive the project is. On this slide is a graph that compares PCI versus time. The purpose of the graph is to show the value of maintenance, specifically of our mill and overlay projects. As I mentioned before, the mill and overlay type of project is the most cost effective project type that we are able to do. If we are able to perform that type of project at critical points in the life of the road, we not only spend the least amount, but we can actually extend the life of the street by a number of years. The graph compares two scenarios, a street with maintenance and a street without maintenance. The blue line is a street with no mill and overlay maintenance performed on it. It starts at a PCI value of 100 and over time decreases. Once it hits 30, we would reconstruct the road, and this cycle is shown twice. The orange line represents a road that does have a mill and overlay maintenance performed on it. You can see a couple critical points on this graph. We would try to do a mill and overlay at those critical points, right around a PCI of 60. When we perform that work, the road is repaired and the PCI is increased back to 100, and you can see that this cycle is repeated twice. Eventually, a mill and overlay won't be effective and we would let the road decrease down to about 30, where we would then do a reconstruction. Across the bottom of the graph are several blue and orange arrows that represent the life cycles of the roads. These arrows are showing that a road with mill and overlay maintenance actually extends the life of the road, meaning that it's a longer period of time before we need to reconstruct it. Not only do we extend the life of the road, but based on the data that we have from past projects, we know that we will spend less money on maintaining our roads when we do it this way, and the condition of the road will be maintained at a higher level. The average PCI of a road with no maintenance is 68. The average PCI of a road with mill and overlay maintenance is 73. That just means it's a nicer road and a smoother ride. And now we'll get to the project specific information. Shown on this slide is a portion of our five year CIP map. This includes all of the projects we're proposing to do in the next five years. I've circled the project 21D. That is the project in your neighborhood. It's 10th Avenue North from 14th Street to 17th Street and 15th and 16th Street from 8th Avenue to 10th Avenue. There's another portion of 21D to the south near 1st Avenue, but that project will be a separate project and bid under a separate contract. So the history on these streets is fairly straightforward. 10th Avenue North, 15th Street North, and 16th Street North were all constructed in 1956. And there was a seal coat on these streets in 2006 and then 2007. Outside of that, there hasn't been any major maintenance items or repairs. Now the street department, public Works street department would, be, would have done some minor maintenance. They might've done a chip seal in the past. Uh, minor repairs, but there hasn't been anything major um, in a pretty significant amount of time. If you take a look at the PCIs on the on the graph in the lower right hand corner of the slide, you can see that 15th Street North has a PCI of 65, 10th Avenue North has a PCI of 61, and 16th Street North has a PCI of 40. We also have non-compliant curb ramps in this area, which we are required by law to update when we come in to do a project such as this. And then there's also some drainage issues on the curb and gutter. So we will be replacing that curb and gutter and making sure that we don't have water pooling in the curb. So this picture shows the type of work that we are proposing to do in your neighborhood. On 15th Street North and 16th Street North, we are proposing to do a rehab, meaning that we will remove and replace the entire pavement section, but that we will leave the curb and gutter in place, except for some spot repairs. On 10th Avenue North, we are proposing to do a mill and overlay on the majority of the road, except for one section of it on the west end where we will do a rehab. Moorhead Public Service will also be working in this area to replace an old cast iron water main. When we remove the pavement from the road, it's typically a very good time to replace or repair utilities. 
Moorhead Public Service will be doing just that. It's worth noting that the Street Project and the Moorhead Public Service Project are two distinct projects with separate contracts and possibly different contractors when performing the work. Now that I've explained how the city determines which projects to do and shown you the type of work we're proposing to do in your neighborhood, I'm going to go through several frequently asked questions. We would normally have a Q&A time during our public meetings, but we won't have that opportunity at this time. You can always contact me if you have additional questions and my contact information will be shown at the end of this presentation. So this first question, when will this project take place? Uh, generally, these projects start kind of early spring or early summer, so May, June, sometimes as early as April. Uh, the contractor is generally given some flexibility on when they start and when they finish. And, and, the, and the weather is, is a factor too. If we have a really wintry late spring, obviously the contractor will not start as early. But generally, we'd say May to June. So the question here is, how will I access my property during construction? Can I use my driveway? And the answer to this is, is generally no, you won't have access to your driveway. You won't be able to park on the street. You won't be able to drive your vehicle into your driveway. So you'll have to park on an adjacent side street or somewhere nearby and walk to your property. We notify the police department that we have a project in the area so they won't be ticketing. So if you happen to be parked there on a night that garbage is going to be coming the next day, you, you won't be getting a ticket for that. So just, just something to be aware of. How will garbage and recycling containers be collected? So property owners, we, we still collect garbage and recycling. You'll have to bring the container to the end of the driveway. And then the contractor is going to come and pick that up. They'll take it to a point for collection and then they'll return it back to your driveway. This next one is a very common question that we receive. How does the city pay for these projects? And I'm just gonna read this. The city typically uses a combination of funding sources, including the general tax levy, special assessments, and general obligation bonds obtained on the open market. The city may also use state aid dollars or federal funds and grants, depending on the eligibility of the project. On a local project such as this, we wouldn't expect to see state aid dollars or federal funds and grants used it would be unusual. It's not impossible, but generally how we're gonna see a project like this one is through special assessments, the general tax levy, and then general obligation bonds. So the next question that naturally comes is how much will I be assessed for this project? And the answer is kind of lengthy and it's gonna take a couple slides, but we'll get started. So the, the first part of the answer here is Property owners will be assessed at front footage rates approved by the Moorhead City Council for the type of project that's being done on their street. For a rectangular lot, front footage is determined as the width of the property abutting the street that is being improved. So basically, how wide is your property? If you look at the picture on the right, you can see the property with the red boundary, that's the property line, and the blue arrow is measuring that width of that lot next to the street. You can see the street on the right-hand side of the picture. So that is the front footage distance or measurement. If you live in a cul-de-sac or if you live in an irregularly shaped lot, we have alternative methods for determining that measurement. So the Moorhead City Council has approved assessment rates for different projects based on the front footage. So for a mill and overlay, it's $30 a front foot. For a rehabilitation, it's $61 a front foot. And for a reconstruction, it's $105 a front foot. So for example, if you consider a resident that owns a property that is 100 feet wide and it's adjacent to one of these project types, you can see below, well, if it's a mill and overlay, $30 a front foot, it's 100 feet wide, that's an assessment of $3,000. If it's a rehabilitation, it's $61 a front foot. So for a 100 foot wide lot, it's $6,100. And you can see what the reconstruction rate is too. So a lot of the properties in your neighborhood average to be about 60 feet wide. Some are a little bit wider, some are a little bit narrower, but 60 feet is kind of a good average. So you can see this, this next example is tailored kind of towards that. The mill and overlay, $30 a front foot, 60 feet wide, it's $1,800 assessed. A rehab, $61, 60 feet wide, $36.60. So those are kind of the assessments you're looking at. $1,800 for a mill and overlay on an average size lot, 
3660 for an average size lot that's going to be in an area that we're doing a rehab. In the previous slide, we went over some assessment amounts based on a lot width and the type of work being done. Typically, those assessments would be added to the property taxes in January of the following year from the project. So 2021, we're proposing to do a project on that street. In the fall of 2021, you would receive a notice from the city letting you know what the assessment announce would, amounts would be. And then in January of 22, 2022, the amount would be officially added to your property taxes and you would begin to pay it that year. Typically, those assessments are paid over a 20-year period, and the city uses a constant principal method for determining the assessments that's shown in the table on the right-hand side here, and I'll go over that in a minute. But homeowners should know that they do have the option of paying part or all of that assessment up front if they would like to and have the opportunity to not earn interest on it if they pay it all off. But you do have that option. But the table on the right-hand side shows you know, year one through year 20 and shows the assessment amount, the principal amount, and the interest. And you can see as time goes on, the principal amount stays the same. It's the constant principal. The interest decreases as time goes on and your total annual payment as a part of your property taxes would, would decrease as well. This example was done with an assessment of $5,000. It's just an arbitrary number that's just used for this. But you can see $5,000 roughly when it starts, it's an increase on your property taxes of $475. And that amount decreases as time goes on. So this next question, uh, I live on a corner lot. Will I be assessed for work on both streets? And we'll run into this situation on this project where we have streets that we are doing on either side of a corner. But the answer is generally no. We apply a credit to corner lots. So generally you're only paying for the street on one side of you. But it's a 150 foot credit on corner, light, corner lots. If your lot is less than 150 feet deep, then you don't receive an assessment for the work on that street. You will still though have an assessment for the other street. The question here is how much will this project cost as a whole? The entire project is estimated to cost approximately $850,000. Assessments from this project are expected to generate $175,000, which is approximately 20.6% of the cost of the project. So that's the homeowner's share of the project through assessments. The remainder of the project is financed through a general obligation bond, which is paid through the city general tax levy. It's important to note here too, that when we bond for these projects, we obtain a bond, we have to assess a minimum 20% of the project to homeowners. And, and right now we're, we're right at that mark. We're at approximately 20.6. So we're about as low as we possibly can go on the bond. This last question is one that we get very commonly. And it goes something like this. Usually we'll get a resident that says, you know, my street isn't in that bad of shape. Why are you doing a project here? when there are other streets in town that are in much worse shape than mine. And the answer to this it comes in a couple parts. So the first part of that is understanding that there, there comes a point in the life cycle of a road when it's just not cost effective to perform major maintenance on it. It is, it is better and it's a better use of our money to actually let that road decline until the point in which we need to reconstruct it. The second part of this answer goes back to comparing a road with maintenance versus a road with no maintenance. A project is being proposed on your street because it's an opportune time to do maintenance. When we're able to get in and do a project before we reach the point of no return, meaning that the PCI is getting too low and it's just not gonna be cost effective to do maintenance, we can make our tax dollars go further, we can extend the life of the road, and we can maintain the overall condition of the city streets at a higher level. As a whole. The third part of this answer is that the city could prioritize doing the worst streets first. The problem is that this would require those streets to be reconstructed and that's the most costly type of project. If we spend our budget addressing the streets in the worst condition we would not have the money to perform intermediate maintenance on other streets. 
remember that a reconstruction is a little over three times as expensive as a mill and overlay, and that a mill and overlay is the most cost-effective method of maintenance. Without increasing taxes or special assessments, we simply wouldn't have the money to do the maintenance, and the system as a whole would degrade in condition. So to summarize, we don't do the worst street first because it's not cost-effective, and our tax dollars are better spent maintaining other streets, which keeps the city street network in better condition as a whole. I'd like to close out this presentation by inviting you to provide feedback if you'd like. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or if you have suggestions for improvements within the project area. This is a neighborhood that you live in, that you drive frequently. Sometimes we miss things, so if you have questions or suggestions for, for things that we should address as a part of this project, please feel free to do that. This is also a very good time to contact us if you have concerns with your sanitary sewer service or if you have to have a repair made. The cost of that replacement or repair is a homeowner cost, but it can be added as an assessment to your property taxes if you would like to do that. It requires a little bit of paperwork. You'd have to petition the city to do that. But if you're interested, please feel free to contact us. Um, any feedback, we'd, we'd ask that you provide that by February 3rd. And contact information will be provided on the last slide here. Lastly, here is contact information for you. There's my email and phone number. If you have a question, feel free to reach out on either one of those methods. If you have a question related specifically to special assessments, either amounts or rates or how the whole process works, feel free to get a hold of Amy Weagle. She is the special assessments coordinator. I want to thank you for watching this presentation. Again, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thanks.